It's the Friday edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on January 2nd, 2015. As promised, it's not bad outside today. We've got some milky sunshine, a milky sky, if you will, with a veil of high and mid-level clouds mixing in with the sun this afternoon. Temperatures have made it into the mid-30s. And most importantly, today is not as windy as it has been over the last couple of days. So it's, it's shaping up to be a nice day. But we do have a lot to talk about as we get beyond the current conditions. Just a real quick look at the radar and the satellite. <coughs> Excuse me across the southeast and down into the plain states still some frozen precipitation some shenanigans down here in texas we're awaiting low pressure to kind of give a kick to all this moisture and it's going to make a turn north and east as we head into the weekend and that's going to bring us mostly rain but uh, certainly some issues with some ice a possibility as we head into tomorrow morning so let's uh, get right to it we'll talk about uh, the first half of the weekend, and we're going to look at the uh, the NAM model here, North American model. This is a uh, a short range model. It goes out a couple of days. Uh, we use it for you know mostly short term events. Here's the simulated radar tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Not raining just yet, but I do think that by well say 8 o'clock. Here's 8 o'clock. The uh, rain is going to be pushing in. Now the question is, what's the temperature? Uh, I, I think this will be falling as liquid precipitation, but the surface temperature down here where we live uh, could be around 31, maybe even 30, as the precipitation arrives. So yes, this could arrive in the form of some uh, some freezing rain, which you can see in kind of this peachish color here uh, on the NAM model at 8 a.m. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cough today. It's 9 o'clock in the morning uh, with the... Uh, freezing rain pushing in and uh, sticking around it looks like for mid-morning now this isn't going to last real long i think two three hours and uh, this will make for some slick conditions certainly on driveways uh sidewalks anything untreated <laughs> excuse me with temperatures near freezing uh you know not around 25 or something you know this isn't going to be a huge ice event this isn't going to be the kind of thing that brings down trees and power lines and causes huge issues on the roads but still you're going to want to take it slow tomorrow morning uh, especially on you know side streets secondary streets that kind of thing the uh freezing rain will last the longest in our northern areas so uh, north of i-80 and especially up into mercer county that's where it will last the longest we'll see that change over to plain rain sooner the farther south and west you are here we are by uh midday around noon really just eastern mercer county probably seeing the last of the um, freezing rain the rest of us just plain old rain everything's gonna be wet and then it looks like we stay soggy for the rest of our saturday it's gonna be pretty wet <coughs> excuse me this so system is going to draw in a lot of moisture. So here's our midday simulated radar. Pretty good wall of water tracking our way. And by early afternoon, mid-afternoon, <laughs> excuse me, by 3 o'clock, it'll just be uh, you know pouring in some parts of the region. I think we're going to average about an inch uh, worth of rain on average. Some a little more, some a little less out of this uh, uh, situation for the weekend, especially Saturday afternoon and into Saturday evening. Here's the... Uh, Simulated radar at 7 p.m. At this point, we're starting to see some breaks in the action showing up. Everything's becoming a little more showery in nature. And as we skip ahead to Sunday morning, most of the shower activity is now just about out of here by daybreak Sunday morning. Now, we'll get a long break, I think, for a lot of Sunday. Uh, so midday, early afternoon, not bad. Temperatures are going to start to drop. As we get into the afternoon after a very mild start to the day, we're talking maybe 52, 53 degrees at the start of Sunday, but then temperatures drop quickly. Here comes the colder air, and by the uh, end of the day Sunday, this precipitation will uh, start to fall in the form of snow showers, and those snow showers will be around then into Sunday night and into Monday as well. Let's skip ahead then to Monday, and the, you know the Arctic hounds are really going to be howling here by early next week. That, uh, <laughs> excuse me. At 52 Sunday morning will seem like a distant memory. Here's Monday's map with a surface high over here and the flow, the clockwise flow around that, producing northwesterly winds downstream of the Great Lakes. I think there will be some accumulating snow on Monday, and most of this will be up in the primary snow belt. But I could see on Monday, even in maybe northern Trumbull, northern Mercer counties, we get some modest uh, lake effect accumulations out of this. So, you know, up towards Mespo or uh, oh, towards. Uh, 
uh, well, let's say Meadville and then heading down into northern Mercer County, uh, you might uh, pick up a couple or a few inches out of this on Monday. The bigger deal for most of us is going to be on Tuesday, and I've been talking about this for a few days now. Here's Tuesday's system, quick-moving little Alberta Clipper system. Alberta Clipper, a fast-moving area of low pressure that originates in southwestern Canada, usually rolls either through the Great Lakes or sometimes they take a more southerly track like this. Uh, with this track and with the amount of moisture it's likely to scoop up, uh, I do think this will be enough to shovel on Tuesday. It's probably not going to be here first thing in the morning. Uh, and by first thing, I mean when the, when the school buses are running. Might be trying to push in, but I suspect most of it's after the buses have picked up the kids. So if you're wishing for a, school, uh, you know, a day off of school on Tuesday, uh, it may happen. Uh, but I suspect conditions will actually be a little worse starting around maybe 8 in the morning. Everything should be mostly okay 6, 7 o'clock with the snow just starting to push in. But nonetheless, we have the chance of a school day on, on Tuesday, a snow day that is. Uh, as we get into Tuesday afternoon, the snow will start to taper off, become a little more intermittent in nature. But, uh, you know, we're a few days out now. I'm going to start to talk about uh, the most likely accumulations. I think this, is, uh, this to me, smells like a 2 to 4 inch type of snow. It's going to be very dry snow. The liquid to snow ratios are going to be pretty high with this, with such a cold air mass. So, uh, you know, it's going to be the kind of snow that you can brush around pretty easily. It's not going to be that heart attack snow that's really heavy and wet and good to make snowmen, but hard to shovel. This will be real powdery stuff, but I think two to as much as four inches out of this looks pretty likely during the daylight hours on Tuesday. Again, this starts maybe just after sunrise and then uh, starts to taper off in the afternoon. What happens beyond Tuesday is everything becomes more lake effect in nature once again. And, and this will be a pretty heavy lake effect event, I think, on Wednesday. This will be a harsh day Wednesday. Coldest, ugliest day of the winter so far. Howling winds out of the north-northwest on Wednesday. Temperatures may struggle to get much above 12 or 13. Wind chills probably won't get above zero this day. And so there might be school closings or delays because of the, uh, the wind chills on Wednesday. But also, you know, I think this lake effect snow will have some uh, some lasting power on Wednesday. So even in some of our southern counties, you know, even down towards the Route 30 corridor, there could be some small accumulations out of snow showers on Wednesday. The farther north you are on Wednesday, the higher likelihood of picking up some some decent accumulations on Wednesday with the lake effect. Again, everyone sees a general snow Tuesday, and then on Wednesday it's much more lake effect, and so northern areas are a little more favored. How much on Wednesday? Not sure yet, but uh, maybe enough to shovel again, especially north of I-80 on Wednesday with some hefty lake effect. Ugly day Wednesday with the wind and the cold and the, and the lake effect snow, showers whipping around. By Thursday, uh, I do think it's still going to be really cold and still breezy, if not windy, but uh, overall not as just intolerable of a day as Wednesday. Here's Thursday afternoon. Again, still a stiff breeze, but notice the isobars aren't as packed you know, real closely together. And most of the lake effect on Thursday is going to, I suspect, be more situated up in the primary snow belts. There could be additional accumulations, Lake Geauga, Ashtabula counties. But in, in the WFMG viewing area, Trumbull County, Mercer County, and on south, I think Thursday it's more likely to be mostly flurries as opposed to uh, significant and additional lake effect accumulations. So, uh, you know, next week the winter, <laughs> the w winter really begins next week. Real quickly, backing up to the freezing rain situation tomorrow. I think this will be a much bigger issue east of I-79 and especially over into central PA for a time on our Saturday. Here's the likelihood of a trace or more worth of freezing rain on Saturday. Our likelihoods of a trace or more decent here around Youngstown. This wouldn't be the kind of thing, though, when you get a, a hundredth of an inch or two. That's not the kind of thing that causes a lot of problems. Once you get a tenth of an inch or perhaps more of freezing rain, then you start seeing it build up on trees and power lines and cause some issues. Notice how low the likelihood of a tenth of an inch is here around here, but the uh, chance of that increases quickly over towards Johnstown, Altoona, Dubois, Clearfield, PA. If you have travel plans on I-80 or the PA Turnpike down in southern PA tomorrow, watch out for this. This will be a problem. Uh, quickly touching on the wind chills for midweek. Based on the GFS model, I've focused on the Midwest here because that's where the ugliest numbers will be. I think there's going to be some wind chills of minus 45 Parts of uh, the Midwest around here, I think minus 15 is on the table as far as a wind chill, maybe even minus 20 for Wednesday, especially in the morning, and perhaps even again Thursday morning. So it's ugly. Uh, here's Thursday morning. Again, the Midwest gets the worst of it. The wind chills, again, could be uh, 
10 to 20 below here. I'm probably going to do a, a blog post this evening uh, for those of you who prefer that over a video. Of course, if you've watched me for the last 10 minutes, you must like these videos. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll have more information on what we expect as far as the snow and the cold and the wind chills for next week with a blog post this evening. Uh, of course, I'll be keeping you up to date on social media. Be sure and check out the updated forecast this weekend from Andrew DiPaolo and Mike Joyce. They'll keep you updated on 21 News in the morning and at 6 and 11. And I will see you right back here on Monday. Have yourself a great weekend.